Hello, I'm Robert Sarrett, and this is a video for people who just got Audulous, and they want to figure out how to play it like a synthesizer and maybe have a little sequencer accompany them. Um, if you want more detailed instructions about how to build things in Audulous from the ground up, I have a series of videos called Know Your Nodes that I'm working on. There should be a playlist on my channel. For more information, I would also strongly encourage you to visit the forum. There's a link in the description for that. All of the things that I'm making in this video, you can download for yourself at the forum and explore at your leisure. First, I'm going to create what my professor used to call a basic beep patch. This is just to ensure that Audulous is making sound. First, I'm going to go to Synthesis and make an oscillator node. This is just your basic oscillator node. It's inside of a lot of other nodes that are fancier. It has a hertz input and an amplitude input and an audio output. You go to MIDI and keyboard, you'll find a gate output, which you can plug into the amplitude, and a hertz output, which you can plug into the hertz input. If you have a keyboard plugged in, you can uh, change the polyphony or the MIDI channel. I'm going to stick with Omni. Omni. And uh, I'm using an external keyboard, but there's also uh, a little on-screen keyboard that you can bring up at the bottom of your screen for the iPad. Now, normally I would recommend going to the input-output part of the library and creating a audio output. But because I'm recording this for a video, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to create a digital-to-analog converter node. And what this does, it just routes it to um, an output on your I.O. device. Today I'll be using I.O. 3. If you have a, uh, an I.O., you can plug it into your iPad through a USB camera connector, or this works on your computer. And I'm going to make a little volume knob using a level node. One, two, and bring this down a little bit. One thing to notice is that polyphony, they don't reduce the volume, so if you have more than one note playing, it's good to start a bit quiet. Voila, it definitely works. Okay, what now? Let's do something more exciting. I'm gonna keep that level note. It's a good volume note. There are definitely more exciting oscillators. Let's go to the library and pick one out. How about this uh, wave shaping oscillator? That's fun. You turn this one and it goes from being a sine wave to a sawtooth wave, and there's like a square wave and a triangle wave in between. Let's just see what that does. Okay, so this one's making a noise at all times. It doesn't have an amplitude input the way that the other oscillator node did. So we're going to have to create another level node. Copy and paste. And use that like a VCA. I'm still going to use my keyboard, but I'm going to use a different input. Keyboard. And the main, main difference is that this has uh, a one per octave output, which is basically the same idea as a volt per an octave. It allows us to interact with a lot more interfaces than Hertz, and the math is easier because everybody knows the division between notes, right? It's like one twelfth. That right there, and still just going to work with a, a gate. That goes to the input. This is the control. I would like to have four voices, please. I'm opening this up and changing this back to four. Escape. Okay, now let's get an ADSR. Synthesis, ADSR. A little short attack. And maybe not so much release and decay. A little bit more release. Wonderful. There you go. Uh, you can make a bunch of different oscillators and mix them together. Uh, you can run these through a filter. Actually, let me make a filter real quick. And then I'll have completed the, the uh, subtractive synth uh, synthesis tutorial. 
library DCF. Hmm. Low pass gate. Low pass filter. Moog low pass filter. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I'm gonna run this through here. And we make another ADSR. Goes into there. And I can make an uh, LFO modulation, LFO basic sine wave. I have it modulating the waveform. Too slow. Okay, that's a good sound. Suppose I wanted to have a sequencer accompany me. What would I have to do? There will be two signals. So first I'm going to make a mixer. I think that's under utility. No, it's under mixers, of course. Five into one, my favorite. And I guess we can get rid of that. Since there is volume knob right here. I'm going to copy this bit right here and use that as the voice for our sequencer. Double click so I can see the whole thing. Go to library, sequencer, basic, eight step sequencer for all of your. Berlin School Tangerine Dream Inspired Madness, arpeggiating over and over endlessly, creating patterns in your memory. Give it some random values. And we're going to need a clock. Which is under Utility, Clock, and Clock. Plug the blinking green light into the green light input, which is the gate. Green light means gate. Uh, red light means a value between 1 and uh, 0. So let's quantize that, because there's nothing quantizing that. Library, utility, quantizer, gateable quantizer. Which is just like a keyboard on its side. So this is going to be this a C major. And we set feed it to gate. And let's listen to the sound. Ooh, that's loud. Let's turn that way down. And it is also way too high. So I'm going to go back again to the library. Utility. Modulation. Modulation. Octave shift. Attenuate. Offset. Take it down a couple octaves. And there you have it. That is your basic sequencer with a synthesizer voice to get you on your way. Uh, hopefully this will be enough to get you started and play around for a little bit. You can also try running these through some effects. The uh, library has some pretty good effects. I especially like the uh, analog delay. Maybe I'll put that on the master. Hmm. Oh, right. I need to turn the volume back up. Wunderbar. All right. Again, if you'd like to check out this patch, there'll be a link down in the description, which will take you to the forum. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.